I'm pleased to sponsor the alternative interview. You left order shop, but you've had a, you've had a fair bit of success since since then, haven't you? You've um you know you had good times at Braintree, especially the yeah. first time when you went 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 there. You're at Horn Church, um where, when they they were having a good time at the time, weren't they at Horn yeah. Church? So you you carried on, and you also went to the America, didn't you? Yeah, I've, I've done a little bit in America. Obviously, I do the coaching bit and everything, and I'm a different person when it's coaching. Totally different to what you are as a manager. I really enjoy coaching young players. And, you know, and, and it's something that if anybody asks me to do now, I still do it, even though I don't want to, you know, but helping Lee Arden out at Braintree and having a couple of other clubs with a lot of money on church and, you know, and Braintree weren't bad and we've done really well there, won the leagues, blah, 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 blah. So every club I've been to, I've done really well and, and won something, Graham. And now, you know, I think this old dog's coming to the end of its day. So, you know, it'd be nice to be remembered of the good things that I've done and understand the bad things that I've done, and people will say I'm a different human being. And talk about your, your most recent experience at, at Braintree, because you went there to really mentor somebody else, didn't you? You, you were, you know, a young young guy who was, yeah. really, and then you ended. He didn't last long, and you ended up managing there. What what was it like managing? Because when I spoke to Terry Brown a, a few weeks ago. Terry says his days in the dugout are well behind him. You know, he, he's got no interest, never going back in the dugout again. Um, but he still thinks he's got something to offer in football and other areas, whether it's a director of football role or yeah. entering a young younger manager or whatever it will be. He's got lots to offer and he should be in the game. Definitely. What are your thoughts about being back in the dugout and the experience that you had recently at Braintree? Well, it was tough because Braintree had already had about 40 players by the time I got there. And everyone was moving out and leaving and so on. And I had to, I had different players every week. It was so not right for me to do that. I managed to get a few results. It was difficult. <clears throat> you know, there weren't a great deal of money at Braintree. So that was going to make it hard. But <laughs> funny enough, like all things with me, Graham, I beat all the top teams and lost one nil from the teams that were around us. Um, and it was difficult, but I was just like a 25-year-old again. Except for I got home after the game. When I used to stay up and watch match of the day, I had to go to bed. I was knackered. <laughs> Took his toll on me. Um, but it was tough. And and then the following season, Lee said, you've done great. Everybody wants you to stay. And then I went, okay. And you got this COVID going on. you got this going on. Players in there. And I didn't have any money, Graham. I just did until the government stepped in. Lee Arden was the only man putting some money in. And that weren't a lot. And I lost seven games on a spin, albeit. The seven games that I lost, the five of them were against all the teams in the top five. Um, and then that's when I went, no, nah, this is not for me. And I decided to walk away. And like you said, uh, Terry Brand, myself, it would be great to go and help younger managers and, 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 and advise them. But the only problem with that, Graham, they're petrified of you stepping in. And that's where Terry and myself like that, you know, it's difficult because the young managers go, can I trust him? Does he want me job? If I lose four games, will he step in? Because the manager that he's been, you know, and, and and young managers just haven't got the confidence to bring someone in who's achieved more than them at that time, which is not the case. Terry would be a great ambassador, as I would, because I'm too old to be a manager now, Graham, but a little bit of coaching, a little bit of changing the system around, icing on the cake. And, and that's funny, because all the shot of the manager, is, he, he was at Braintree, of course, Danny Searle, yeah. and he's now at, um, at all the shot. And, you know, he, he comes across he comes across really well and, and and he's got lots of good ideas and that but i think he's crying out for a bit of seniority in terms of that link between the the the, the management and the boardroom and just the overall knowledge of football yeah. and, and contacts and all that kind of stuff and i think it would develop him as well as um yeah the benefit good. of the football club having a, a senior person above him or, well i've always said it, I i've always said i'd help Lee Arden, because he's been a great friend and he has helped and looked after me over the years that I've managed for him. And we're still good friends till this day. As you know, I resigned six weeks ago at Braintree because I just couldn't do it no more going out, Graham. My job 
was getting me up and taking me all over the country. And, you know, and then I had to get back and rush for training and football games. And it was just too much. And I was getting too tired. But, you know, Danny, I hear good things about and I wish him well. And if ever he wants to pick the phone up to me, you can give him his number, mate. And, and I'd help him as much as I possibly could. I don't, know. Hey? I don't know him. I've only met him twice. Oh, have you? <laughs> oh, he's a bit of a rat. <laughs> no, he's not. <laughs> no, but I think that's the difference. Terry Brand and myself and people like us, Georgie Wakelin, you know, could really help young managers and say, look, I've been there. Why don't you try this? Why don't you do that? You know? But they don't, Graham, because they're petrified. They're scared you're going to nick their job. So, what kind of state is football in now? What, what kind of state to, to, to your heyday? When, when, when you, when you, would you class your heyday as Aldershot? Was that, was that an Enfield? Were they your two... Definitely, two, like two top two clubs. clubs. Two top clubs, good supporters, good money. Players now are coming down. We've got so many foreign players that are coming into... Um, the higher leagues and, had a, and the young players, all the young uh, scholar kids that I had, I had two at, uh, uh, st- from Stevenage because obviously Alex Revell, my relationship with Alex. And and that's what you're getting. And in that level, they're not costing you any money, but the standard of football is not going to be that good. And I, I feel for non-league football at the minute, mate. And this COVID crap needs to get going and get out of our system so we can all start living a normal life and enjoying the things that we want to do. But yeah, I, ju- I just feel, Graham, that football's changed in a lot of ways and not all good. But do you still watch it keenly? You know, you see it on the television, you, you do analyse it and tactical stuff and that, or you just not have the interest that you had? Um, yes and no. Um, my son-in-law, Michael, um, he's an Aston Villa supporter. Like I say, um, Charlotte and, and Michael are having... Uh, my little grandson in, in June and I'm trying so hard to get him to be a West Ham fan. But Michael said, no way in a million years is a Villa man. And um, we have a bit of banter about that and we watch football together and have a beer and it's lovely and, and I really enjoy it. And, um, but like you say, it's, it's not that if a game was on, if there was a better film on, I'd watch the film. Yeah. Oh. Final thing, really, Joel. I mean, you, you, like you said, you are a grandfather now, aren't you? So, um, yeah. you know, oh, two, little, two little baby girls as well. Has that uh, changed well. you? Sorry? Has that changed you at all? Oh, mate, it's like um, butter out my hand, mate. I love them to bits. You know, anyone, whoo-hoo, anyone has a go at my kids, mate, <laughs> you're asking for trouble. <laughs> you know, simple as that. No, it's great. I love it, Graham. And, and like I said, I've met some wonderful people in football. And um, it's all, all look at all the years that have gone by and, you know, I'm still talking to you, still talking to Terry Owens and Rack and so on. Lovely people, mate. And um, they're the things that you miss. But like I say, you know where I am. I know where you are. And when we want to, we just pick the phone up. How you doing, mate? Blah, 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 blah. And that's what it's all about now, Graham. Absolutely. So really, George, just the last one is, you know, all the shots had, a, had an up and down time since you know, they got to the Football League, got to the conference, got to the Football League, went out of the Football League, went into administration, been up and down. But the fans have stayed loyal. They're still there. And what final message would you have for the for the fans at, at Aldershot? They're amazing, mate. Absolutely amazing. I love, I know I had my ups and downs with them and I know we had the banter and I know they slaughtered me and done all types of things when I was in the shower and everything. But that's because they're passionate like me and that's one thing I always took into account. They're passionate people. And I've got to be honest with you, Graham, for the amount of people that go through the turnstiles at Aldershot Town Football Club. They're a good bunch of supporters, a great bunch of supporters. And it was an honour and a privilege to work for them as a manager of that football club. Brilliant. Fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, mate. Well, my dinner's got cold. Is it? Uh, Charlotte I Michael. Get there. It's going to be a couple of hours, did I? Yeah, you did, didn't you? <laughs> <laughs> it can only be 15 minutes. <laughs>
The beady eye of the law is often used by opposing clubs in this division to stop George Borg motivating his players with so-called industrial language. And uh, I won't pay him for that. You know, I'm not going to get paid for that. They cheated in the second half and um, they can take it or leave it. It doesn't bother me. I'll sign a new team if I have to. Nice club. Yeah, they're great people. They deserve it. What about this uh, first half when you went in with the Unbelievable, right there, isn't it? Watch him get me a kitchen. George, I want to rise. He's getting a sack. <laughs> Is this one of the uh, happiest football days of the life? Ah, it's one of the best, yeah. Great crowd. Deserve it. George. I deserve it. There it is, my friend. 